and good morning, good morning to each and all. And we'd like to welcome you all to the Ambassadors Assembly Discipleship Platform. It's always both our honor and pleasure to have you and to be your host as the gospel is concerned. Amen. Amen. Uh, today we're going to start in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 8. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 8. And it reads, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence, or some translations say for the surpassing value of the knowledge of Christ, or knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them as rubberish, that I may gain Christ. Amen. I'm going to read that again. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord or other, I think the CSB version says for the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them as rubberish that I may gain Christ amen uh, today's lesson title will be the centrality of Christ Amen. Amen. The centrality of Christ. Let's pray. Um, Father God, we are just so humble, grateful this morning um, just to be in your presence, Father, just to wake up again. For we know to be absent from the body is to be present uh, with the Lord and with you. Uh, but just to have breath in our lives uh, one more time, Father, lets us know that you're not through with us in the now. So, uh, Father, we just come here today. Uh, to sit at your feet, uh, to sit at the feet of Jesus and for you to pour into us this day. So right now we die to ourselves um, and we open ourselves up uh, to you so that we can learn. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Um, so the purpose of this passage of scripture is to bring emphasis or even clarity on the true meaning of gain. This is what Paul is talking about. He's talking about gain. We see the word gain over and over. What he thought was gain, then he let that go, that he may gain Christ. Amen. Uh, Paul is telling the church of Philippi that there is no such thing as gain outside of Christ. There's no such thing as gain outside of Christ. This is evident as he highlights everything that he once considered to be gain or of importance, right? Things he thought once brought him value, credibility, or reputation, right? This is what Paul refers to as having confidence in the flesh. Philippians 3, 3 through 4. Amen. Let's go back to Philippians 3 and 3 and 8. We're going to read 3 through 8. Amen. For we are the circumcision. This verse 3. For we are the circumcision. He's talking to the body of Christ, the church at Philippi, who worship God in spirit, not in the flesh. Right? It's a different circumcision that Paul is attacking right here. Right? The mutilate, uh, mutilation of the flesh, right? But we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh or yourself. Amen. That's a broader term, even though in this context, Paul is referring to Jews who boast in the law. And circumcision. This is the context, but it's, it, 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 it can stretch a lot broader than that, right? This is why he details what true circumcision is. It's not about the mutilation of the flesh, because we can do that, right? But this circumcision, we had no part in. 
right? This was God the Father's doing. It's a gift. Amen. We didn't have we didn't play a part in this circumcision. We welcomed it. It's a, it's a, we accepted it. Amen. But this, like I said, but this can also translate to, to anything apart from Christ that we deem um, makes us great or makes us decent individuals. And that's what I kind of want to deal with. Right. Because there are things we can do in the flesh. There, there are things we can pursue in the flesh that apart from Christ, makes us decent individuals, right? It's, it's, it's things of the flesh that's good that we pursue. Amen. 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 I'm going to get to that a little later, though. Let's, let's continue reading. Verse 4, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so, right? He's, he's referring to those who oppose him, the Jews that oppose him. He's saying, listen, you, you think you have something to boast about. I have more to boast about right. in the flesh, right? Uh, concerning the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for what? Christ. Right? What he considered to be gain. Right? He counted the loss. And, 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 and this is the dilemma with, 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 with most Christians' growth in the body. They are not willing to, to count all things a loss. See, we, we count some things a loss, but some things we still hold dear to us immaturely, though, not really, kind of subconsciously not knowing that it's a threat to our spiritual growth because how we categorize it, because we don't feel like it's wrong. And like I said, I'm going to get into that, right? Yet, indeed, I also count all things, because you got to think about it. Circumcision was a good thing up until the coming of Christ, the New Testament, the New Covenant. Before this, circumcision was circumcision. It was the standard, right? Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. So as I was stating earlier, you know, this can be uh, a much, uh, this can be broader than just, you know, the context in which Paul was referring to, which Paul highlights a lot of different accolades that in his time made him important, made him somebody, right? And, and, and really what led me here today is because I see so much in the church from the pulpit, from ministers, prophets, or teachers, or whoever, we focus on everything except Christ, things apart from Christ, right? We, we, we focus on manhood, womanhood, right? Womanhood, uh, you know. We even teach it from the pulpit, though, the great women of the Bible, or the great men of the Bible. Teach us how to be great men, or men of valor, or marriage, right? You know, great husband. Teach you how to be a good husband. Teach you how to be a wife. Or, te or people take pride in being a good husband or a good wife. You got people who take pride in being a good man or a good woman, but that can be apart from Christ. You got a lot of people who assume they are good. Look what Jesus told who was the rich young ruler. He said, good teacher. Christ said, why do you call me good? Because you assume you understand what good is. And this is another one of our dilemmas, our ignorance. But we don't understand that we're ignorant. But as we approach Christ, we must approach him ignorant, not knowing anything, right? Empty. This is the renewal process. We can't just renew part of us. We got to renew all of us, right? But, but, but this is what led me here because our focus shouldn't be to teach people how to be a man or a woman or a husband. Our focus from the pulpit or as believers is to teach Christ and him crucified. That's it. 
Because I can teach you how to be a man in, and that ain't going to get you into heaven. Nor is that going to grow your relationship with Christ. I can teach you how to be a Proverbs 31 woman or whatever, but that ain't going to grow your relationship with Christ. Right? That ain't going to get you into heaven. That is not going to get you salvation. That is not going to help you renew your mind. Amen? We must focus on the centrality of Christ. Amen. One of our favorite scriptures. Seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness. What is the kingdom? Jesus Christ. He is the kingdom. What is his righteousness? Jesus Christ. <laughs> he is the righteousness. For your righteousness is not of your own, but of Christ Jesus. So our focus solely should be on Christ Jesus. Amen. There is no gain apart from Christ. But as we seek Christ and grow in the knowledge thereof, we gain all things. Get that. There's no gain apart from Christ. But as we seek Christ and grow in the knowledge thereof, we gain all things. Notice it says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. We can't seek to add the things that are supposed to be added, and this is more than just things, and this is what we're going to get into. It's, 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 it's more than just tangible things, but it's e even attributes of greatness that we seek as individuals. Right? Everybody strive for greatness at some level, right? You know, we want to be great at something, great at our jobs, great in our careers, great at money, great in finance, a great father. Right, but there's no greatness apart from Christ, and we're, and we're going to see that, right? Because we're talking about the centrality of Christ, because this is the centrality of Christ. Seeking Christ to gain all things, and we're going to see why. Right here, let's go to Colossians chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 15, and I ain't going to hold you too long. We're going to close. Colossians chapter 1, starting at 15. And it reads, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, over all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Get this, all things, this is what we're dealing with, all things. Paul said, all things that I considered gain, I counted a loss. Here it says, all things were, this is why Paul considered a loss. Because all things were created through him and for him. All things, whatever you, whatever is worth pursuing, it was created through Christ and for him. Right? Right. You know what I'm saying? So we got to focus on the all things, Right? In it, the good, like manhood, like it's a lot of things that's, that's, that's worthy of pursuing. And you got people that pursue them who don't know Christ. They don't have a relationship with Christ, but they wake up every morning striving to be a good individual. Amen? But that is not going to reward them in the end. Amen? Apart from Christ, it's all in vain. It may look rewarding in the in, 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 at the moment, but when you get to the gate, you can't say, well, I, I was a good father to my son, and, 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 and maybe rightfully so, and Jesus said, well, you were indeed a good father, but I don't know you. <laughs> so being a good father ain't the goal. I was a good wife to my husband. Indeed you were. But I don't know you. Depart from me. <laughs> Right? So it's so much good that we can do apart from Christ, but that's not the goal. The goal is Christ. Amen? So everything was created through him and for him. This is why we can't seek these things apart from Christ. In fact, in fact, in fact we don't seek them at all. And here's why. 17. And he is before all things. So he's before what you seek. He's before all things, and get this, and in him 
all things consist. This is why we don't pursue it, because he's before all things. And in him, all things consist. Amen. This is why we don't seek these things, even though they can be good apart from Christ. We don't seek them because he's before these things. He's before it. So how can we skip past him to seek it? This is what a lot of people do. They do it ignorantly, subconsciously, because they don't know any better. Right? But he is before all things. Whatever you want in life, he's before it. So you don't seek that. You don't seek what you want because Christ is before it. What you want, a good job? Christ is before it. You want a company? You want your own company? Christ is before it. You want to be a good husband? Christ is before it. He's before all things. And get this, and in him, all things consist. In him, all things consist. The word consist means to be composed or made up of. So whatever you want is made up of Christ. It's composed of Christ. So in other words, he is before all things, and all things are composed or made up of Christ. A good marriage is composed and made up of Christ. A good husband is composed and made up of Christ. He is the ingredients. He is the substance. A good man is composed and made up of Christ. That's what make it good. Right? That's what composed means. It's made up of Christ. He's in all things. This is the centrality. He's at the center of all things. Amen? Right? So this is why we don't seek these things apart from Christ. Because he is at the center. Right? Yeah. We seek him. Mm -hmm. And when we seek him... We gain all things that pertains to our life. That's the cheat code. As Christians, we seek Christ. Yeah, it's the easy yoke. My yoke, my weight, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. And see, we have, you got people, you know, who have businesses, and we can get so caught up, and this is why we mustn't have physical sight. Because we can, we can get so caught up, oh, you know, and assume that man, you know, because, we, you know, we, 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 we got fleshly discernment. Well, they doing good. I'm over here making under 40000 a year, and look at them. They making over 100000 so I might need to listen to them. They don't know what they're talking They can teach you about business, but guess what? Them teaching you about business going to pull you away from Christ. See, there's a video going around this at home. I, you probably seen a homeless man he was speaking some wisdom. Mm -hmm. Some young dude. And it was a man that Vita had shared with me. <coughs> and I said, he's spent. Right. But it wasn't God. The one to God. Now the dude that was doing commentary on him, he was like, on his caption, he was like, the greatest sermon I ever heard. Mm -hmm. I got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because he's not it's, Right. See what I'm saying? Right. And that's how people gonna get with the hit with the mark. The mark right. ain't gonna be easy. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's gonna be good. Right. You know, it's gonna sound good. Right. It's the doctrine you accept. Right. 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 You know, matter of fact, you're gonna be criticized for not taking it. Right. I mean, you stupid. Right. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says it. Right. We're gonna be twisted. People receiving the mark now. Christ ain't saying it, bro. Look what, come on. Look at the things, prime example, what we're talking about. We're talking about gain. Paul said, what was gain to me? Yeah. I considered it a loss. Yeah. Now he does. Now he, does. Yeah. he came to the realization yeah. for the surpassing value of knowing Christ. Sur surpassing value means, guess what? He found out that Christ was way more valuable than these things. There was a greater return in knowing Christ Jesus than being a Pharisee, than being a Hebrew, than having a business, than being a great individual. That was a far greater return. Because all, all of it don't fail. That's the yeah. thing. Hey, that's the... Be great today. Pop. In, in that's what Solomon said. <laughs> and that's why I love Solomon, like what it is, Ecclesiastics. He said it's all vanity. He said to be rich, to have money, to have wives, to have... He said it's all vanity. 
why would he say that? Because it's all coming to an end. It all has an expiration date. The only thing that doesn't have an expiration date is Christ Jesus. Amen. Come on. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. So we seek the word of Christ. Something that remains forever. Not something that's temporary. But see, this is why our mind must be renewed because we, we carry this unrenewed mindset in the church and this is where these opposite gospels is formed that Paul said will get you cursed. Yeah. He said, if you preach any other gospel, then of Christ let you be a curse. The, the prosperity gospel. Hey, 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 because we have unrenewed mindsets and our sights are so short. And we think, because yeah, prosperity brings you gain in the now, but is it true gain? Come on, man. When it's all said and done. Yeah, you, you, yeah, we assume we gain it now. We win it now. That's, that's the problem in the now. And see, this is how Satan get a lot of us in the now. We get caught up in the hype. We get caught up in spending that money. And we just, oh, yeah, we, oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Until the time come to where you have to account for it. Because we all going to sit at the blame seat of Christ. Give an account for all the things we've done in the body. Come on. Everything and you know, you, you sought prosperity and not Christ. Seek ye first the kingdom, not prosperity. The kingdom, not marriage. You got people. We we, we got you got people that esteem a lot of things in the church apart from Christ. You got to get this right. You got to get married. You can't be an elder not married. Marriage, God, God honors marriage. No, God honors a person that honors Christ Jesus. Yeah. Come on, teacher. That's what God honors. God honors everybody who honors Christ Jesus. The name that's above every name. And this is the problem. Unrenewed Christians. <laughs> we see everything. I, I listen to a lot of sermons, man. And I just, why, like, what are they talking about? You're talking, like he said, you're, you're spitting some good stuff. Yeah. But it's not going to grow a person. It's not going to deliver a person. It's not going to grow them in Christ if you're not speaking of Christ, if you're not targeting them or directing them to the heart of Christ. They're not going to grow. They're going to stay bathed. They're going to stay where they at. And they're going to be seeking external things for fulfillment instead of seeking Christ. And we do it all the time. We see it all the time. And we find ourselves stressed out and burnt out at the end. And guess what? The, we, the external reward can be fooling. Because don't nobody know what's going on in the inside of you. You done stressed yourself out to the point of depression to get what you got. And you ain't even happy, but you got it. But all people see is what you got. They don't see what's going on internally in you. They don't see the relationships that you done burnt to get there. Couldn't be a, couldn't be a father to your son because you were spending so much time pursuing wealth. Couldn't be a son to father because you were spending so much time pursuing prosperity. Couldn't do anything of purpose. Purpose has nothing to do with prosperity. Purpose has nothing to do with wealth. Purpose has nothing to do with success. It's purpose. Purpose might hurt. Purpose might hurt. <laughs> Purpose might go against success. Purpose might kill you. <laughs> might kill you. That's the point. But to be a person who pursues pur purpose, you got to have the heart of Christ. Because it demands sacrifice. What I said to be a <laughs> What I said? <laughs> I can't. We got it on video. We got it on video. I said yeah. To be a person who pursues purpose, you must have the heart of Christ. <laughs> to be a purpose person that pursues purpose, purpose, you must have the heart of Christ because it demands sacrifice. Man. Purpose, man, you got. Purpose. I wake up every day, don't want to. I shoot, I be fighting temptation sometimes because purpose draws so much from me. Like Paul said, I'm, I'm like I'm poured out like a drink offering every day okay. for the benefit of others. That's purpose. Deny yourself and follow me. Pick up your, pick up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself. Die to yourselves. This is purpose. 
because your purpose is greater than you. Purpose is greater than your gain. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we got the devil's doctrine in the church. Mm -hmm. And it's crippling the church. And it's the thing. You got people that say, but the church isn't effective. Mm -hmm. It ain't advancing. It's not growing. It's, it's, it's not proactive. It's, it's not like yeast as it's supposed to be. Because Satan had creeped in with this doctrine mm -hmm. of the flesh. When we supposed to be dead to the flesh, why do you think the New Testament might always talk about the flesh? The mind of the flesh is in opposition of the mind of the spirit. We've got to die to the flesh and grow in the spirit. The, the Bible says, God says, I'm spirit, and those who worship me was worship me in spirit and truth. Because we've got to die to the flesh. Because the flesh is still a part of us. Still wants what it, still wants, what it wants. Mm -hmm. Success is not a curriculum of the Bible, people. A lot of things that we assume are, we'll pull it out. What they call the expository teaching. We'll, 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 we'll extract it from the text and, and make a doctrine out of it. But that's false because the whole Bible, everything points to Christ, leads to Christ. And we even do that. And we, that's why people love teaching out the Old Testament so much. Because they'll are, they are use what God did with a certain individual and make that doctrine when God was dealing with that individual. But see, this is the thing. They don't know the God. They don't know the God. Because the Old Testament points to it Christ. It points to Christ. Tell you, when Paul was ready to dissect that stuff in Hebrew, he, 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 like in Hebrew, when we say that, we, Genesis just speak on why God favored Abel's offering. All right. Why you favorite here, isn't that? Right. But Paul reveals it in Hebrew. Right. Faith in God. Our right. Our access to God now is through Christ. Same function. Right. Now we live in the Christ. But if you can't, if, 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 if you don't understand the centrality no, of Christ, you ain't going to. You just going to be preaching the Bible. You're going to be loose. Yeah. You're going to be loose in the Bible. And and that's what we see. Point to Christ, and that's why it's hard to get And it can sound so good. You know, I'm going I'm, I'm to say this boldly. I used to, you know, because this is the problem, because we follow so many people because of their excellence of speech. Even, okay, before I say this, again, Paul said, I decided to know nothing among you except Christ Jesus and him crucified. He said this in a different text, right? He said, I could come in excellence of speech, big vocabulary. I could come like this, but no, that's not going to benefit you. I could come talking about a lot of things that will benefit you in the flesh, but it's not going to benefit you in the spirit. So I'm not. I'm going to come with what's going to benefit you in the spirit, and that's Christ and crucified. So I used, to, I used to be a big follower of T.D. Jakes because, you know, I've been a, I've been a hungry Christian for a while now. So I be looking for sermons that challenge me, mm -hmm. right? I be looking for some good, deep teaching. You know what I'm saying? Because of what, just where I'm at, I ain't boasting or nothing, but you know what I'm saying? But I started realizing something about him. A lot of his sermons don't point to Christ. Most of them don't. And he teach a lot out of the Old Testament. And he was on what that was, the elephant room or something, the podcast or something. And he couldn't even definitively give a, a say that he believed in the Trinity. Wow. And I had a problem with that. And a lot of stuff that he, you know, even his acceptance, he, it's just a lot, you know, and, 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 and it made me realize Not in it. It, Not in the how, Not in the how firm I got to be with my mind. Right, because we can get so led away by an individual and not Christ. A lot of individuals be up here teaching, and you're led away by their knowledge, by their charisma. That's what you led. That's what you're being enticed by, not Christ. You're not seeing Christ. You're not hearing Christ. You, oh, he, ooh, 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 ooh he, he this, he that, he that. Yeah, that's his persuasiveness. This is the individual, and this is what Paul was saying. I can do that. I could have came to you like that. I got the ability to do it. I could get your money. 
I could do a lot of things, but it won't benefit you. So I know nothing but Christ Jesus for your sake. Because Paul got the heart of Christ. He's a real Christian. 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things, here we go with all things again. He's stressing it for a reason because God knows that our pursuit is so broad. He knows this. So he's saying all these things that we pursue, all things he may have permanence. That in all things he, Christ Jesus, may have permanence. Preminence means superiority. So, so, so Christ has superiority over all things. And I, I love the term all things because it's so broad you can fit anything in there. Whatever, fit it in, just, just put it in there. Christ has superiority over it. He's over it. He's before it. He has superiority over it. This is why Paul counted it a loss. Because he, he went to hearing the gospel. What did Job say? Job said, I, at first I, I heard of you. But now I see you. And as we begin to see Christ because we're seeking him, our understanding will change. And our mind will begin, start getting renewed. And we'll start counting some things are lost because we're growing in Christ. Start taking a taste out your mouth on some things. Start changing some habits and stuff. As you grow in Christ Jesus. This is why Paul counted all. This is why Paul could count all things a loss. Because he figured out that Christ is superior to all things. So why chase things? Let me chase what's superior. 19. For it pleased the Father that in him, Christ, all the fullness should dwell. The fullness, substance. Work, the things of worth, things of value. It pleased the Father that in Christ everything, all the fullness should dwell in Christ Jesus. 20. And by him to reconcile, it is again, all things to himself. Mm -hmm. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. It's talking about all things. Good. Mm -hmm. Having made peace through the blood of Christ. I'm going to give you an example. Sin corrupted what was good and created the possibility for what is good to be something that's bad. It's what sin did. In the beginning, everything was good. But sin came in and created the, 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 the possibility, the 50-50 chance that what's good can turn out to be bad. And so this is why Paul could say, I'd rather you not marry. Because he's talking about apart from Christ. He's looking at Christ and how sin has corrupted things. And these things aren't all that good anymore because of sin. The separation. What does sin do? Separate us from God. It's not. That's why Paul, if you notice when he's giving instructions to husbands and wives, he don't command the husband to love wives. No. Right. He commands them to love her. As, as Christ, Christ loves the church. That's, that's, that's the part. stem, right. He can tell the woman to respect the husband, to respect him as unto to Christ. Love. Move. Right. That is in Christ. Christ absent all of these things that seem good. It's not really good because we have, because we can pursue it apart from Christ. And that's why he's saying, he said, listen, you know, this stuff ain't going to benefit you. Focus on Christ. Like he's trying to, like, focus on Christ, but, like, if you must, you know, go ahead. But this is why he's saying it because sin. Sin not only separated us, but it separated a lot of things from God. This is why, verse 20, and by him to reconcile all things. Not just us. God is trying to reconcile even things. 
to Christ. He's, he's trying to fix it. He's not only trying to fix our relationship, but he's also trying to fix things relationship to him because once sin came, it, it messed up everything. That's good. So we're seeking these things that haven't been reconciled yet back to Christ. This is why we must seek Christ. That's good. And see, we'll miss that. In the curse in the beginning, God cursed. Now, he, he, he didn't, he not only cursed Adam and Eve, he cursed the ground. Because of sin. This is why the Bible says all of creation is eagerly waiting for the revealing of the true sons of God. This is when Jesus Christ will come back and restore all things. Right now we have the promise and the guarantee that it's going to happen. And this is, this is what we live by, by faith. This is the hope, but it hasn't happened. Right? It hasn't happened yet. But when Christ comes the second time, we have the guarantee. So this is what we stand on. We know that he's coming. We have faith that he's coming. And we're already standing in what he's coming to do when he comes. But this is what he will do, restore all things. And then, guess what? We don't, there, there, there will be no conflict within us. Because everything will be good. Because we will know only what God the Father and Christ Jesus intends for us to know. And that's him. Centrality means the quality of being essential or the greatest importance. This is what centrality means, right? So the centrality of Christ means that Christ is the greatest importance to all things. Simple. It's nothing hard. He is essential to all things if you don't want it to be in vain. Why? Why? Yeah. If you, if you don't want it to be in vain. In vain. Because like I said, we can assume this can sound like gibberish. I don't know what he's talking about because you, I know some folks who don't know Christ and they living it up. Okay, yeah. Get caught, get caught up in the hype. That's what you think. That's what you assume. And Satan attacks us in the now. He attacks our sight because he knows we flesh still. So he gets you to see something in the now and it's because, we, because we... We, 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 we from the, the show me state because we, 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 we look at the tangible for evidence but our evidence is stuff that's not seen but our evidence is seen I see it so I believe it she even tell me that man over there living you think he living till he ain't living you think you living till you ain't living see we, we don't know the time or the hour and see that's the problem I had man I had a big cousin well known in the streets when I tell you he was heavy in the streets, had a lot of money, I'm talking about he did his thing. He did his thing. But time caught up with him, with my cousin. Yeah, time caught up with him, man. And he wasn't the same person he was. He ended up on dialysis, body just fell in him. And he didn't have the things that he once had. Still had the reputation, but what is reputation? And we had conversations, and he said that, man, this is, you know, you're like, man, it, it, it took him all this time to see that he was chasing ghosts. And here it is on his deathbed, this person who used to be this person, and got nothing. And see, we don't have to wait. And this is what Christ is saying. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We don't have time to wait. The kingdom of heaven is the second coming. It's approaching. Mm -hmm. The second coming is approaching. No one knows the time or the hour, so we need to repent and get our minds right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. It don't. That's what... Man, I'm telling y'all, go and read Solomon, the Ecclesiastes. This, this is what he, he said. See, that's what that's for. Mm -hmm. 
When the Bible says that God by faith, God approves them, God wants to look back Come on. at their life to Come on. see their relationship. Right, that's it. Not back what they had. Their life and see their <laughs> right. failures and right. see God's right. power and not going back right. looking at what Joshua did. Right, yeah, what he did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I got to imitate Joshua. Right. No, now, we don't imitate. Joshua's anointing. Right. And now everyone right. are the Isaiah Thank you. Anointing. Thank you. Uh, and then because that would do, you know, you got that Jeremiah prophet going. <laughs> Right. We Christians, man. We're supposed to imitate Christ. And see, that's that's exactly what I'm talking about. We come up with these sermons based on how God dealt with an individual. And we're like, this is how God, and you, you know, and no, you, that's how God was dealing with that individual, but that's not the goal. But why was God dealing with that individual like that? Because of faith. That's the goal. Because of faith. Not how, but why? Right. Right. You want, they want people want to bring the Old Testament culture right. and back. Solomon. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, man, why you got that on? Look at Solomon. Well, you know, Solomon was rich. Well, why he was rich? He wasn't rich because he was seeking riches. He was rich because God blessed him because he wasn't seeking. He was seeking wisdom. But look at the and it will, and, and I remember we were talking about this, and we, I, I do believe that. I believe that God, because God knew that Solomon was going to be the wise, the, this is why the, 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 the books of wisdom in the Bible comes from Solomon. And God gave him this money, and I mean, God gave him wisdom and all of this riches so that he can experience things. Because what is wisdom? Knowledge and experience. Knowledge applied. And look what he said. This is what he said when he was talking about riches. He said, all you doing, basically, I'm just paraphrasing. He said, you store it up for the next person just to die and give it away to somebody who ain't even worked for it. He said, it's all vanity. You spend your life chasing something that you can't take with you. And life can, <coughs> life can seem like a long time, until you end up 80, 50, 60, you be like, the whole life can pass me by. <laughs> you feel me? And, this, and, and, and see, this is why a lot of older people get wise, because they see you can't get years back. You can't go back and repair it. You can't go back and, and, and do, you can't. It's over with. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? And this is what we got to grasp. We got to repent. This is what Paul was saying. He repented. Repent means turn. He turned from all things. I, I, I considered all things a loss. That's Paul repenting. Mm -hmm. He changed his mind. He said, man, I don't want this stuff no more. Mm -hmm. He went in a different direction mm -hmm. because he seen this was leading him nowhere. Nothing can thrive or survive truly without Christ because he's the center of all things. Nothing can survive truly. It's the best truly. So the, the key to being a great man or woman is Christ. The key to having a great marriage is Christ. Being a good parent, being successful, whatever is Christ. Being prosperous. It's Christ. Amen. Amen. So we count all things aloud so that we may gain Christ. Because when we gain Christ, we, until we've gained Christ, we truly gain nothing at all. Amen. Let's get God a hand. Praise.